Juan Whitney from uh, Chapel Hill, North Carolina. Whitney, are you with us? Yes, sir. Oh, are great. You doing? Okay, thank you. It looks like the line is working. You're on Creation Update here with Hugh Ross and Jeff Swearing. Go ahead. Yeah, hi, guys. Um, I actually spoke with you a, a few weeks ago regarding the um, the irreducible complexity of that one enzyme. Um, I was calling back because I had an issue with the discussion you guys had a few weeks ago about the Cambrian explosion. Do you recall that at all? Who was on that? Were you on, Jeff, uh, or Hugh, either? No, I wasn't on. Ma- but... Maybe you were talking with Fuzz Rano, or, or maybe you can give a recap. Yeah, why don't you give yeah. a recap? That'll help us. Sure. Perhaps, but the, basically the, the argument that you guys made was that um, the Cambrian explosion was about 540 million years, and what we see in the Cambrian explosion is a bunch of life popping into existence from nothing, um, that there are no precursors to what we see pop up, and that that was um, basically evidence for the fifth day of creation, is what um, I believe it was Dr. Rana was, was trying to say. Okay. Um, he said that this is, a, again, a problem for evolution and how evolutionists or scientists will, will try and explain um, this away, is, and actually the term that he used was like a teenage daughter trying to explain away when she's been caught. Um, scientists say that, well, there were fossils earlier, but, or there is animals earlier, but they just didn't fossilize. And my, my issue with, I guess, that entire segment that he did was that it had a, a number of just factual errors in it that completely misrepresented the Cambrian explosion in and of itself. Um, for example, there were there were plenty of, of animals before the Cambrian explosion, and I'm not sure how familiar you guys are with embryology, but there were triploblastic bi- bilaterians before that, which are basically organisms with three germ layers that, that have bilateral symmetry, like us. And there's plenty of evidence of them existing before the Cambrian explosion, including fossils in and of themselves. Um, the Cambrian explosion does show the first example of hard parts that are appearing, um, probably due to predation, but it, and again, those do fossilize easier than what is before, but the fact of the matter is, uh, there is plenty of life before. That and we see um, transitional fossils within the Cambrian explosion. For example, lobopods, which are transitional fossils between arthropods and worms, we can steadily see them evolving within the Cambrian period. Um, and and it, it's just, I, I guess my issue with that is, it's just as much of a problem for creationism as it would be evolution if there was a problem at all, simply because we don't see any plants, reptiles, mammals, birds, insects, etc., appearing during the Cambrian explosion, etc., or um, at all. So if it were a creation event, wouldn't we be seeing these as well? I mean, the Bible says that plants were created on the third day, yet no plants appear until after the Cambrian period. Um, the Bible says that on the fifth day, which is what Dr. Rana was saying, life appeared on the sea and then there were birds. But there aren't birds, there aren't even any vertebrates appearing anywhere near the Cambrian period. Um, this is strictly invertebrate. So the Cambrian explosion contradicts um, the, the biblical account of it. Well, uh, yeah, yeah, those, those are good points you're raising. And, uh, you know, uh, uh, Dr. Rana is not here, but um, I'm familiar with what he's written, so I'll give a stab at trying to outline it. Uh, but I would recommend reading several of the articles that uh, Fuzz has put together for uh, today's new reason to believe, because he actually addresses a lot of the issues you're talking about uh, in those articles. Uh, first of all, uh, Fuzz d- did do a segment here, oh, what, six, nine months ago, on what's been called the Avalon Explosion, which is an mm-hmm. event that took place 575 million years ago. Uh, where you get this transition from, you know, bacterial life and bacterial colonies and, uh, you know, um, uh, symbiosis between bacteria and, uh, you know, uh, micro uh, fungi. And uh, you get these sponges and jellyfish appearing and uh, the Ediacara uh, uh, creatures that show up. And uh, what Fuzz talked about is that the research papers are indicating that there was this sudden eruption of uh, these creatures uh, 575 million years ago, and the timing there is that's uh, shortly after the snowball events and the crossing of the solar system, uh, the solar system crossing a spiral arm, and so coming out of that uh, cold uh, period, you would have the mm-hmm. planet, you know, capable of taking these creatures for the first time, and it's like the moment the planet is able to take them, there they appear. And then how for the next 35 million years, you really don't see any uh, change or evolution uh, in this Ediacara explosion, and then they die off. Uh, and so there's some kind of extinction that takes place, mass extinction, and then, you know, a few million years later or less, 
you get the Canberra explosion. And, uh, you know, he's also given some uh, discussion on this show how, you're right, you don't get birds and reptiles and mammals in the Canberra explosion, but you do get uh, vertebrates. You do see fish right at the very base of the Canberra explosion 543 million years ago. And our model for Creation Day 5 is at the beginning of Creation Day 5, uh, it would be the Cambrian explosion, although I guess you could make a case, since uh, the Bible is not that specific, that it could include the Avalon explosion as well. I mean, the text says swarms of small sea creatures, you know, suddenly appearing. <clears throat> so there's some room for interpretation there. Uh, but I think those of us here had reasons to believe would say the beginning of creation day five doesn't predate uh, a billion years. It's probably in the neighborhood of half a billion years ago, plus or minus 100 million years. In terms of the plants on creation, oh, yeah, in terms of what go- else goes on in creation day five, it's the latter part of creation day five where you see the birds and the mammals. And so we look at creation day five as covering a period of at least 300 million years, maybe even longer. Uh, we look at creation day six as being relatively brief, uh, probably in the neighborhood of something like 50 million years, the last uh, 50 million. And the I way thought animals, go ahead. Yeah, not, I, I thought animals were created on the sixth day. Uh, what you have created on day six are three specialized kinds of land mammals. In other words, creation day five talks about birds generically and sea mammals generically. But there's no reference in uh, Genesis 1 about the first appearance of land mammals. Rather, what you see in the creation day 6 is a text addresses three specialized kinds of land mammals, land mammals that God creates to cohabit the planet with human beings. And so the generic word for mammals doesn't even show up in the sixth day. It immediately goes to describing short-legged land mammals and two different kinds of long-legged land mammals, those that are difficult to tame and those that are easy to tame, which I think is referring to herbivorous long-legged creatures that God intended for us to domesticate for agriculture and then the long-legged carnivores that he intended for us to uh, adopt as household pets. Uh, so in that sense, we realize that Genesis 1 has lots of gaps. It doesn't describe everything. On the other hand, you've got three other creation accounts, Psalm 104, Job 38 and 39, and Proverbs 8, that fill in a lot of the scientific details that are left out of Genesis 1. And, yeah, go ahead. Oh, I- I'm sorry. Um, but when did reptiles appear then? Uh, reptiles are not mentioned in Genesis 1. I mean, that's where you go to the record of nature. We were talking earlier, God's given us two books, the book of Scripture, the book of nature. They complement one another. uh, They overlap one another, but it's not the same content. Uh, You're not going to get particle physics out of the Bible. You've got to go to the record of nature for that. Uh, Likewise, the origin of reptiles, the origin of amphibians, uh, you're not going to get that from the Bible. Of course, but what the fossil record clearly shows is, I mean, after the Cambrian, it clearly shows it going from fish to amphibians to reptiles to to birds and simultaneously mammals. I mean, it... it, Yeah, we're not denying that. Exactly what said, you know, here that plants were created way before and things like that. I mean, it's not a matter of it it not saying or having an opinion on the subject. It has an opinion. The opinion's just wrong and contradicted by the evidence. Yeah, I I think you're referring to creation day three in the plants. Mm Mm-hmm. Okay, well... Um, if you look at it in the King James translation, it uses the words trees, uh, seed, and fruit. And I can easily see where an English reader would get the wrong idea that it's talking about deciduous plants. If you look at it... Or any plants. They don't have to be deciduous. Well, whatever. I mean, if you look at it in the the Hebrew that it was written, and uh, you'll see this up on our website. We actually have a little uh, art article there which gives you all the Hebrew words that are used in Genesis 1 and what the lexical definition for each of those words are. And what you discover is where it uses the word fruit, uh, it's really, or the word seed, for example, it's simply referring to an embryo. And you know, all life uh, begins with an embryo. Uh, Likewise, the word for fruit is better translated uh, food supply uh, for that embryo. And when it talks about trees, it's referring to anything that would give some measure of stiffness. So that would be any multicellular uh, growth that uh, would have some kind of uh, stem or whatever would qualify. 
So in that sense, it's not talking about, uh, quote, plants as we understand plants. Uh, it could be easily uh, referring to the creatures that we see showing up two, three uh, million years ago, th- two, three billion years ago, pardon me. Uh, well, I mean, that, it sounds like you're taking a lot of that as, as metaphorical, so to speak. I mean, no, why not, not at all. Your problem with evolution, then, is what I'm not really understanding. 